So, guys, it might shock you to know that the Archbishops of Oyo State, that's from Ibadan, they've all come out to endorse this end bad governance protest. Guess what? They are in support of Nigerians taking back their country. Enough of this. Apart from that, even Tunde Bakari, I mean Pastor Tunde Bakari, has also come out to say Nigerians have the right to protest. And the security agents equally have that duty to protect Nigerians while they protest. But he has urged Nigerians to avoid any form of destruction. You need to see the way he puts it. Take a look. If you can't speak God's word, if you can't speak peace into the atmosphere, if you cannot bring about a change in the hearts of the leaders and the led, because you do not know what these people face, and he who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. Nobody wants to be tagged a failure. They might not understand what is happening, but there's a God in heaven who gives wisdom to rulers. And it will help our nation. Yeah. Violence will not erupt in this land. Yeah. Peace will reign supreme. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, pastor, are you saying they should not protest? It is a fundamental human right to protest. But please, don't break down the little infrastructure we have. And don't let it turn into a bloodbath. I want you to know that I led protests in this nation and even phones that were lost in the battleground were returned. Nobody hurt anyone. Nobody killed anyone. You can make your point without letting anything be destroyed. And the government and the leaders also should restrain themselves not to turn simple protests into a bloodbath. The nation is on an edge now. Don't push us into the precipice. Can I hear? Amen. So guys, apart from this video also our usual pastor isa ebuba has come out to speak remember his words come out as fire as regards to this protest take a look at what he has got to tell nigerians this message will go out to everyone at this point listen nobody and i am saying this no protester should allow talks that will be hired whether by government or by people to infiltrate your rank. Every protester protect your protest and let it be a peaceful protest. Declare the new Nigeria. Raise the flag of Nigeria and declare the new Nigeria. All of you here, I will meet you at the secretariat fly over everyone here and let me see all of you that are ready to go for Nigeria if you are ready, if you are not ready don't raise your hand because if you raise your hand angels will slap you so let me see those of you that are ready to go for Nigeria raise your hand wave your hand so on the 1st of August we will all appear in black and with our Nigerian flag and we will declare, you can wear green and white, green, green and green, or green and white, but black or green and white, with Nigerian flag. We will all be there. We will worship Jehovah. We will pray. We will march until we we'll establish the purpose of God for our nation. Let me see your right hand. Let me see your right hand. If you are, you are happy, you are happy with the way things are going in Nigeria, raise your right hand. Video them. Video them. Video. I want to show it to the world. I want to show it that people are very happy. If you are not happy with what is going on in Nigeria, raise your right hand. You are not happy. Video them. Video them. Turn the video. Turn that video. Video them, video them, video them round. We have this pastor 
who is lamenting over, you know, the kind of conscience, if at all, our politicians have any conscience. He's just wondering the kind of people we have as leaders who do not even care for the people who voted for them. Their conscience are dead. You need to see his strong terms that he used in describing the kind of leadership we have in Nigeria. He wants you to go and protest so as to take back your country. The time is now. Take a look. It's not only politicians that are self-centered and self-serving. We religious leaders too. We have our own share of the blame. The traditional rulers and then those in active governance. You know, we have a problem. And I think it's a matter of uh, serious introspection. We need to look in to our hearts and critically examine who are we and what do we do? What are our motives? Why are we in the places we are? What can we do better? And things like that. But this lack of critical self-analysis is what generates the corruption. People just contest for positions aggressively campaigning and generating all kinds of negative uh, issues and all to get to a position where they have access to the national patrimony. They have ac access to wealth uncontrolled. They can use it anyhow and so on. They don't care about the common good. They don't care about the children in, growing up. They don't care about the youth in their millions on the streets who should be well looked after. There is no social insurance scheme. If you are sick, you are on your own. If there's somebody who is mental on the street, she is on her own. There is a young person who, you know, has issues, nowhere to go. So I think we need to talk about ethical values, uh, this uh, patriotic spirit that we must all cultivate, which I'm afraid people get into politics and this is absent and uh, we, we need to grow. So how is the church helping with that, building ethical values? And what's the role of religious organizations um, on, on, on that matter? We do our best. We are religious leaders. I am concerned about things of the spirit. I'm concerned about the soul and values that would enhance a better society and so on. We do the talking. We do the preaching. We don't fail in this. But I'm afraid the listening is a problem. And you wonder whether all these people who are in positions of authority listen at all. They are either Muslims or Christians, largely in this nation. And the amount of preaching that goes on, go around and you see the churches in their thousands, go around, you see mosques everywhere. Every morning there, is, there are bells ringing, then there is loud calling to prayer. Is it all hypocrisy or what? Is it really genuine? Why does this not translate to effective leadership, good governance, good conduct, honest and very good behavior? Why is it always we separate religion from uh, social issues? So I was coming to that uh, question. You pastor an, um, a diocese. And yes, it is true that on Sundays the churches are full, on Fridays the mosques are full, but it does not necessarily reflect in the behavior of the society. You pastor a diocese, you've seen a lot or you see a lot on a daily basis. Can you help us understand a little bit why this is the situation? What are you saying? Well, when people are in church, they are hungry, they have no jobs, they have nobody to listen to them. They have no access to leaders they have elected. You cannot have a, a composed congregation. They might be physically present. They enjoy the music, the dance and all that. The dancing sometimes is to get rid of the, the, you know, uh, the depression that they are undergoing. So they are there, but they are not present. You must eat well. You must have a proper job. When you come to church, you know you go back, you have your lunch, you know you have a job to go to and all that. But these are missing, and you want us to pump moral values into them. You want the religious leaders to work miracles and compulsorily force them to obey the commandments of God. Somebody who is hungry is going to steal. Somebody who has no job is going to be, do criminal 
activities. So this is not pecul peculiar to Nigerians or, it is, or Africans. It is, it's, yes. it's, 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 a human, it's human nature. When you are denied basic things of survival, you turn to crime. Criminality will flourish. So do what is right. Give everybody his or her due. That is the definition of justice. Give them their due. And then you see order. The youth will listen to you when you talk. But now you see the youth are all up and do, they are just ready to fight because they are angry and hungry. So uh, we must not just blame them all the time. Let us blame uh, the leadership. Let's blame the lack of doing the right thing that should guarantee peace and orderliness in the society. So talking about politicians and serving, uh, self-serving interests, or let's say leadership, have you seen any indications in the past one year that anything has changed or it's going to change? Well, I am only told that things will change. I'm told that what we're experiencing now is temporary. I'm told that to eat a uh, good omelette, you need to break the egg. And they, they were in the process of breaking the egg. I'm looking forward to the nice omelette. But when will it come? I cannot tell. So guys, you have seen it for yourself. I don't know what you make of this video. Honestly, Nigeria has got to that point where we can no longer resist. We've been trying to, you know, endure, tolerate, accommodate, bear. Oh my God. I don't know how to describe it. Nigerians have taken a whole lot from our politicians. They just keep embezzling the money. They keep embezzling the money. Okay, uh, Interpol released a communique saying that government money is being flown out of Nigeria hourly. Government money is being flown out of Nigeria hourly. So some people are just busy. Their own is to borrow the money once it comes. They equally fly it out into their own personal accounts nigerians something is wrong somewhere in this country honestly and that is why we all must stand up to the occasion of taking back our country this country has got to be fixed let me know what you think about this in the comment section below please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell thank you